Another Sunday loss as the Cardinals miss out on a chance to sweep the Boston Red Sox. But in good news, the new uniforms are out, and we're going to be ranking those with RedbirdRants.com's Thomas Govain on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X, at J.D. Sports Radio. You can also follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us on YouTube. YouTube going to be important today because more pictures of the new uniforms have come out so we're going to be uh dropping a lot of the uh the new photos for you in today's episode so if you're on the audio version love that that's awesome but you might want to come over to youtube so you can check out some of the uh the visual aspects of the show this is a show serving cardinal nation giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat Coming in to help me out uh once again here today our good man from redbirdranch.com thomas govain Set to talk uh, about not only what's going on the field, but what's happening off the field. Some big news with the uh, City Connect uniforms getting dropped. Thomas, how was your weekend, buddy? You good? Yeah, it was great. Uh, I got to go back to my parents, spend some time with them. So it was a good weekend all around. When you go and visit the parents, what do you guys do? Do you end up sitting around? Because as my family gets older, they don't really want to go out and do all that much. They're like dinner, and then they just chill. Is that what you guys do when you go and visit? Yeah, for the most part. At this point, we're going in town because there's a, an event or something. And so we'll go. To, we'll take care of that, whatever the business is. But after that, it's just sitting around with my parents, watching TV, eating a meal. That's about it. <laughs> Trying to watch the Cardinals, hopefully pulling off a victory, stuff like that. Yeah, it's very similar yeah. for me as well. Um, well, this weekend, I, I thought it was, I mean, obviously Sunday's game was brutal. Like it, it was awful. And lucky for me, I had to watch it on the replay. I was actually out at a, a golf tournament. On, on Sunday. So uh, I didn't have to see it all live, which I looked like it was very, very frustrating. But uh, things did not go well on Sunday, but they did win two of three. Okay. The sky is not falling. I know Sunday was a brutal one. Uh, some people are kind of over Matthew Libertor pitching, as a, at least as a starting pitcher. And it, and it was an odd situation for him. You know, you, again, it's kind of like what they did last year with Zach Thompson, where there's this yo yo effect where one day, you're in the bullpen, and we love you there. We're not going to move you. And then something happens to, normally, Stephen Matz, and you have to move somebody back up. And now that was Matthew Libertor, and he didn't quite respond the way that we hoped he would. And uh, it looks like they're going to go with some different options, at least look at different options of what's going to happen with that number five spot in the rotation with Stephen Matz out. Uh, what was your assessment on what you saw from Matthew Libertor and the team itself on Sunday? I think it just stinks that this is what he's – been pushed into i know that we had him and thompson as our sixth and seventh starters but thompson's on triple a trying to figure out and libby was just doing so well in the bullpen it stinks to see him fizzle out like this as a starter i think given a full offseason slate of preparation he knows he's going to be the starting rotation that'd be a much different story but i feel for the guy at this point um it was a pretty uninspiring game altogether though to close out the series when we could get the sweep yeah, yeah, it was. But at the same time, you know, you take two of three. So it wasn't all negatives. And one thing that we are starting to see a lot of is a lot more offense, although it wasn't <laughs> very good on Sunday. The rest of the weekend and in fact, the rest of this past entire week, pretty darn good. What are you seeing uh, with the offense so far that uh, has you thinking a little bit better about what things are going to be like for the team moving forward? Yeah, I think they're at six games in a row with a home run, maybe seven games. So that's nice to be able to get the slugging and the long ball in there. Um, the vibes around the team seem to be much better. I don't know if you saw the replay. I think it was Newt Bar and Siani in the outfield at the end of an inning. Newt Bar caught the ball, flipped it to Siani, and he did a 360 midair and just chucks it out in the stands. So that's something you didn't really see at the beginning of the year all around. Um, but the offense has really been going off. Uh, I think I mean, the Cardinals gave up, what is it, 21 runs? So almost an average of seven per game and they still end up winning two out of three. So if, if you can have that offense production to go along with pitching, that's fine. It, it'd do pretty well for the season. 
And it's something that I, I think that's what we thought this team was going to be more like. We weren't going to be losing three to two ball games and four to two ball games. You know, it was going to be where the opposition was going to score four, five, maybe even six, but that you were comfortable with the offense coming into the season that they would be able to outscore a lot of these other teams. And it just did not happen for the first month and a half. And, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to see it pick up a little bit. Uh, some people think it has to do with the weather. Uh, being back home in St. Louis, starting to warm up a little bit. Maybe that's helping the guys out, which is a possibility. Obviously, the ball flies a lot better at Bush uh, when it is warmer out. Um, you know, and it also, like you mentioned, you know, the, the good vibes that you're seeing from guys like Siani and Newpar, you're starting to see some personality out of some of the younger guys. You know, it's not the business as usual, boring stuff. And I, I hate calling Paul Goldschmidt boring, but he is, okay? He's just, that's just who he is. It's okay, but he's not that guy. You know, Nolan Gorman, not that guy. He's not going to show a lot of expression or anything like that. And you need to have guys that have some attitude and uh, have some flair and uh, look like they're actually enjoying the game of baseball. I'm not saying what Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Gorman do is wrong, but it's just so businesslike where you're still playing a game. You know, it's still a kid's game. You're getting paid very well. And you're playing at the, the highest levels. And I know winning has a lot to do with this as well, because when you're winning, people are happier. But uh, it, it's just nice to see some of that some of that personality coming out of some of the players on this team. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that I think we expected out of them last year, at least, especially with Newt Barr. And you had the Wayno going away tour this year. We felt a little bit more deflated, but the veteran addition seemed to bring in some sort of help there. So it's good to see the guys lifting themselves back up and lifting each other up. Yeah, and uh, I, and I, I, I'd be remiss to not mention that you know Matt Carpenter coming back to the team has it coincides with them kind of playing a little bit better. And I'm not saying like he's the key cog to it all, but he's an important voice in the clubhouse. It's the reason why they brought him back. And it's uh, the reason why he's here again. And uh, I, I feel like that's something uh, you know, you're seeing interviews with him talking with people and, you know, it, you see why he's a type of guy that they wanted in that clubhouse to kind of get these guys to uh, smile a little bit more and have a little more fun. <laughs> that and the uh, more mole ejection. I think they're five and two since he got booted out. So both of those <laughs> things combined. I'll tell you, Thomas, they must listen to the to the show. They must listen to the podcast because I said two days before that, I'm like, I, it's about time that the things are so stale right now that Ali just I'm waiting for his head to explode and yep. just to go out and lose his mind on a on an ump. On, and it doesn't matter what it's about. Ball strikes, whatever it was. And then it finally, happened, he finally snapped and everybody and then it just kind of lit that fire a little bit and uh and then you saw him starting to manage a little bit differently in games where you know the the, the icing of the 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 pitcher uh in that in that one game and it was just like you know mm -hmm. you're starting to see little things that he's trying to do to you know change what's going on uh whatever the flow of the game is at the at certain points and i mean i give him credit i give him credit for that and uh so far so good seems like it worked uh tyler o'neill returned to st louis what were your thoughts on uh my man, Bro Neal, making his return to St. Louis. I thought it was pretty cool how the – not that I expected the crowd not to react to him nicely, but considering how things – how the breakup happened, you know, he, even he said before that first game that he was like, I'm not sure what the reaction is going to be, but it was still pretty cool to see Tyler back. And, of course, he hits a mammoth home run on Sunday. Not shocking at all. Yeah, I'm happy he got the standing ovation. I know he went out on sour terms, but it's good to see. That's something that the Cardinal fans are known for, always giving their, their alumni standing ovation. So he provided a lot of help for us for a couple of years there. It was good to see him get that ovation and hit a home run. It was for the enemy, but the game was already lost at that point. It's okay. <laughs> I thought he was just going to plant one at Big Mac land. I was like, he's probably going to yeah. put two or three up there <laughs> because that's what happens when... Uh, Revenge when we game. <laughs> uh, also, um, wanted to mention, if you think about it, if roles were reversed... OK, and Tyler O'Neill was still on this team and Ollie was managing for somebody else. Do you think the Cardinals fans would stand and applaud? No, <laughs> no, yeah. I don't. <laughs> I, I was don't. thinking Managers, about that. Managers are so different. 
you could tell the fan base, they weren't really mad at Tyler O'Neill. They, they wished he'd stayed healthy. In fact, a lot of people still wanted him around, even though you, you know, you got the people who were like, ah, he's always hurt, get rid of him. And I understand that. But at the same time, you saw people that weren't really mad at him about any of the situations. And uh, I, I just, I thought I was like, what if it was different? Do you think they would cheer for yeah. Ali? And like, and now managing for the, at third base for the Red Sox, Ali Marmol, would they clap? Would they, hey, you know, all the great <laughs> things, you know, I don't know. I don't think that would happen yeah. either. No. Uh, all right, let's get into some uniform talk. Uh, we've got the new City Connects. We had the leak earlier uh, last week. Now they're, it's official. They've been launched today. We've got a bunch of pictures to roll through for you guys. And uh, Thomas did some dirty work and went and ranked all of the uniforms. He had polls up. I saw this guy working hard. So we're going <laughs> to talk about uh, what the results were and what everybody thought about the uh, new City Connects. Plus, we'll share those new pictures with you next coming up on Locked on Cardinals. Life insurance is an important safety net for you and your family. Now, the last thing that you want is for something to happen to you or a loved one, and then for you not to be prepared. That would be a horrible, sinking feeling. But it's not always easy finding the right policy. It's going to be time-consuming. It can be overwhelming. Not, not only just putting in the work to find what you need, but just emotionally like thinking about horrible things and why you're preparing yourself for them. And that's where our friends at Policy Genius can help. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money, which is great because you can provide your family with a, a financial safety net and you can do it starting today. You, can, you don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. And some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts. They'll be on hand to help talk you through it. You don't have to do it alone. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. You may not know that, but they may not have it all covered for you. And it may not come with you if you have to switch jobs ever, which is something that happens to a lot of people these days. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash Locked on MLB, or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all, don't you? you you've saved, you've researched, you, you've put in the hours to make sure everything's where it needs to be. You've invested all that you can. You think you got it covered, right? Well, now... Let's take it to the next level. You got to take those investments to that next level by using what every financial great uses. And that, my friends, is Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or maybe you're new to this and you're looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance can give you all the tools and the data that you need, and they put it all in one place for you. They are the number one financial destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle. They've got breaking news. They've got original editorial perspectives analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. They've got everything you could possibly want at your fingertips to help you through all of this. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart the great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures that you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. You want your money. You want to keep your money. You want to grow more with the money you have. Community over 90 million users each month. Their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For, for the comprehensive financial news, the analysis, all of this stuff I'm talking about, visit the brand behind every great investor, which is yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Are you watching Fox Sports on ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume because of the shouting? Then make that switch to Locked On Sports today. I'm surprised it's taken you this long if you haven't done it already. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. And it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. 
part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app, search the word Cardinals, and thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. The great Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com joining me here today, and uh, we're, we're going to talk fashion now. I, I, where do you think you rate on a uh, uh, fashion <laughs> scale, Thomas? Uh, I'm, I'm somewhere around like a six or a seven. I, I, I kind of know what's good and what's bad, but I'm not somebody who's uh, paving the way for fashion. Uh, how, how do you rank yourself? <laughs> if I didn't have my wife to help me pick out outfits, I'd probably be a two or a three. All but right, all with, right. her, with her help, I put myself in the six, seven range as well. I hope she hears this because uh, she'll she'll feel real nice about that. That's nice of you to say. <laughs> All right. Well, a lot of people have opinions on the new uniforms that the Cardinals just dropped. City Connect uniforms uh, are here, and they uh, we saw the leak earlier last week, and um, you know it was kind of people were a little bit. Meh, they're all right. They're not great. They're they're safe which was a very cardinal way to go when it came to this. What was your initial reaction to seeing the City Connect jerseys? It was pretty close to that. I like the additional elements, the patch on the sleeve, <clears throat> the font on the hat. Those side side touches were good, but front and center just to see the loo with the birds in the bat. It, just, it felt, like you said, it felt safe. It felt like it was the St. Louis Cardinals. I am so happy they did not go with red pants, though. I know that wasn't a thing from the beginning. DeWitt said months ago. It looks like pajamas. So just to see the red with the white <laughs> looks great. I always say it, and I'm not using this as a negative term. We're gonna we're flashing some of the pictures up on the screen right now. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, but yeah, when they when the teams do the same colored pants in uh, uniform, it really reminds me of like softball uniforms. You know that uh, you'll see at the college level, uh, and we saw at the high school level and stuff. And uh, I always was like, I, I wish they would just switch it up a little bit and uh I'm, I'm really glad because i've always been a fan of the spring training uniforms like i yes. loved the red tops and i mentioned this in the show uh last week that you know red top white bottom there's two other teams that off the top of my head that i knew did that i don't know if there's more than this but like the reds and the angels do it i think it mm -hmm. looks great every single time they had it and uh, i always liked it in spring training with the cardinals and uh so i was pleased with that but like you said the uh the birds on the bat portion of it uh i know it's iconic I know that I get it, but I thought this was the one chance that they had to, <laughs> they were going to move away from it for at least one uniform. This was going to be it. And I thought they were going to use more stuff with the, that included the arch in it. And uh, yes. that really didn't happen. You got it on the patch, but uh, that was, that was it. So did that surprise you a little bit? It did. I mean, I shouldn't have been surprised because it's the Cardinals organization, but <clears throat> I think a Florida Lee or something with a flag or the arch, Front and center would have been a nice touch, but that's pretty bold for, for what they're going for. They did include all the elements, though, that I wanted them to. The colors, the patch, the arch, the Florida Lee, the rivers, and then even some additional stuff like the year and then the font choice on the hat. All those yeah. were bonuses. Yeah, but that patch, I think that patch on the side there, on the on the left sleeve, I think that's awesome with the Florida Lee and the uh, yeah. the arch. I, I, was, I was like, ooh, I wish that had been like the main focus. Of right. the whole thing, but uh, you know, they kept it simple, kept it small. So, um, yeah, give us your reactions in the comments section on what you think about the the new city connect. So, like I said, I think most people they don't hate them, they're not like nope. you know, they didn't go with some weird neon color and make things really goofy looking. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they didn't go with like black or something like that. Although, some people mentioned that charcoal gray would have been something just a not the whole yeah. thing. But, you know, have a, a little bit that in the trim or something would have been cool. But uh, I think overall, people are going to be pretty pleased with them. I think they're going to sell just fine, at the, as long, especially when they keep winning. That's going to keep things <laughs> going uh, as far as uh, people wanting to purchase items. Winning makes um, everything better. Yeah, winning always. It just meant everything's better when you win. Uh, they included uh, the in the promo. We had our boy Nelly mm -hmm. showing off all the championship rings. Uh, obviously, when you when you saw in her first off, when you when you got the hashtag for the Lou for 2024 i knew something was going to happen <laughs> when, it, when, it, yeah. when it came and everything i got city connect that's probably what it's going to be a part of so it didn't shock me that they used that and uh obviously nelly being from st louis one of the most famous musicians that came out of the city so uh didn't shock me that they they use him since he says it in his songs a lot so um now we got to figure out 
Where do the City Connects rank among the many uniforms that uh, the Cardinals have gone through over the years? If you're watching on YouTube, I'm I'm wearing like the, the old version, like the 40s cream looking right now. And uh, this was one of my favorite uniforms. So when I play MLB The Show, I use the old school ones too, the old mm -hmm. CMU all years. And uh, it's one of my favorites. I also like this hat that I'm wearing right now, which is from that era too. I like that better than the STL one that they got for this. Like I thought this would have looked cool uh, with mm -hmm. our city connects, but uh, they ended up going with the STL. But uh, you put up a, a, an article at redbirdrants.com, which we'll link in the description and in the show notes for you guys to go through ranking these and uh, you go a little more in depth into them, but let's uh, let's roll through. You went through what five? You go five of them? Yes. Yeah, it's all five that we have. All right. So coming in at number five, <laughs> you had uh, the, the we're going ones that they they wear today. So it's not like through the out the entire history of the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. So, but what they currently have. So coming in at number five, what'd you have? Uh, it was the road grays and of the uniforms the Cardinals have are bad. I think that's something that was important to note. Bleacher Report did a ranking at the beginning of the year for the whole suite of MLB teams, and the Cardinals were two. So just the fact that the Road, road Grays are number five doesn't mean that they're a bad jersey. I just didn't think yeah. that they were unique. I love twists on uniforms. I think it's a way that you can connect to fans, make it more personal. And so that's why I put the Road Grays last. When you pair the Grays with the Navy hats, I think that's mm -hmm. a little bit special, though. Buddy, I love that look, and and they've been yeah. doing. If you notice, they've been doing the uh, the spikes. They've been wearing dark spikes yeah. too, while uh, when they put the blue hats on this year, which uh, I think was a nice touch too. It just look looks a little more menacing for some reason. I don't know why. Right. It does to me and so I, I thought that was great i wish they could just do that all the time on the road just scrap the reds uh, and go with yep. the with the blue and the blue i i think that i dig that yep absolutely uh number four what do we got no uh, i put the city connect there and i wavered on that for a little bit i didn't think it was right to put the two usual the roads and the homes at the, as the last two spots but i put the city connected four i think primarily because of the front and center of the chest i think that just could have been a little bit better Speaking of these city connects, uh, all the pictures and stuff, do you, you think it's weird? Cause like, I feel bad that he's not on the team, but like, it's, a, there's a lot of Mason went in there. Like this was probably yeah. where Jordan Walker was supposed to be. And, right. And even yeah. Tommy Edmond, I think he was on one of the main promos with Arnado Goldschmidt. And when he was on, I saw one of them. I did them. see him in one. I don't have a, a picture of that one to flash anybody, but uh, I don't know. It was a have lot of seen... people, people are obviously <laughs> loving watch right now, but it made me think, I was like, oh, Jordan was probably yeah. supposed to be in all of this and Mason just took it from him. <laughs> right. There's a screen right, grab so somebody got of Carlson and somebody else eating Emo's pizza. So that, that could have been Jordan Walker, I guess. See that? Yeah. They talked about the square and the uh, toasted raviolis and stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, it made me hungry. I'm starving right now thinking about it. All right, number <laughs> three. What do you got on the list, brother? The home whites. Uh, they're a really classic look. I think it's nice that they have cardinals. Uh, I think that the the red and the white contrast is great. But it's just it's it's pretty straightforward. But it's probably one of the best home jerseys in in baseball. So that's why yeah. it's it's up on number three. Yeah, classic look. Hard to get away from that. Plus, when you pair it up, because I. When I was playing ball, I, I had my socks down too until college ball. And then we all brought yeah. them back up. And when you add the striped socks that the Cardinals wear to the uniform, uh, whether it's home or away, it also makes the uniform just pop a little bit more. I wish more of the guys wore them that way. Although it was weird seeing when Pujols had his socks up because he didn't wear it that way when he was <laughs> in payday. And then he had them up and I'm like, now nah, you just kind of look like an old man up there. Yeah, was, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Wayno wore it that way for a lot of his career at the end there. And, uh, you know, I like Donovan wearing them that way. Now, I just, yeah. I don't know. I like those socks. I think those are really cool. I think that's a, a missed opportunity when the guys cover them up because it, it, it brings some personality to it. Uh, coming in at number two, what do you got there, Thomas? It was the alternate creams. Um, Which like I said before, this weekend. <laughs> I know first time it took forever. The next one hasn't even made an appearance yet, but the creams are at two. Um, it's I'm a fan of specialty jerseys. I'm really a fan of when you combine the old with the new. And I think that the cream and then the first on my ranking did that perfectly. Um, you've got some elements from, I think it was the thirties. Yeah, it was the thirties and the forties thrown in there. You've got St. Louis rather than Cardinals. So that's a little bit unique. You still have the birds in the bat. The trim going down the chest and on the sleeves is a nice touch too with the red. So I, all around, it was really well designed. 
Yeah, and uh, and it pops on TV uh, and yeah. in person too when you're at a game and they're wearing them on Saturdays. Like uh, they, they just they stand out. They look nice. They look they look clean, and uh, that's one of the things that we like. And it's specifically why number one on the list. Uh, it was my favorite. It's what I voted for in your poll, Thomas. Uh, it ends up being the, the the number one ranked Cardinal current Cardinal uniform. Yes, and that would be your victory blues. Yeah, those those are my favorite. They look clean. Um, it brings people back to the 70s and the 80s, which is an era that a lot of Cardinal fans now yearn for in a way. So to bring bring that era back in, the blue just looks nice. It's not a color you think of with the Cardinals. So to see it out there on the field looks pretty cool as well. And then it brings in the red trim as well. The fact that it's all blue, I know I don't love pants and, and shirts mixing, but the blue pants and the blue jersey just all the way top to bottom looks nice as well. Yeah, and uh, one thing I miss about Tyler O'Neill, so Tyler used to wear, no matter what uniform it was, he wore the the spikes always matched. And so yeah. he would wear the victory blues on the road, and then he would have those baby blue spikes on too. And it just, <laughs> I don't know, it looked cool. It looked good on him. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. And it's one of those uniforms that in – you know, my wife is a Cincinnati Reds fan. She grew up in Cincinnati. She, No matter what I try to do, she will not – come over to the dark side as she calls it uh but she even admits that when she sees she's like oh your guys is powder blues is what she calls it she's like those are gorgeous she's like yeah. those just look so good you're wearing one similar right now on, yeah it's uh, just the shirt the but yeah yeah and uh it, it's just it's so nice and uh we've mm -hmm. missed them this year uh and i guess it was it was it part of the was it a part of the Fanatics issue or the Nike issue that why we didn't get to see them? Or do you think this was kind of a, a planned thing waiting for City Connect? Because now all of a sudden you're seeing them all come out. No, I wrote about it a couple months ago. It was all part of Fanatics errors. Uh, they just don't have them ready for production. I think I saw June was the last update. But yeah. we're, what, two weeks away from June and we haven't heard anything since. So. Yeah, uh, well, hopefully they'll be coming down here soon. As far as the uh, City Connect jerseys, uh, they are doing, what is it, 12 home games they'll wear them. First one's going to come up this Friday against the Cubs. Uh, then you've got June 7th against the Rockies, June 23rd against the Giants, 28th against the Reds. But uh, we're going to put all of these up there for you guys if you haven't seen them on Twitter X yet, so we'll post them for you. But uh, you're going to get them 12 times. Are you going to purchase one of these, Thomas? Because I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to purchase <laughs> uniforms of current players because they'll get hurt and I'll, I'll curse them. So yeah, right. yeah. Uh, I can't, I'm not allowed to. I told, I, I said online, I'd like if they swept Boston, I'd go buy something, but they didn't. So I don't, I don't have to live up to that. Do you think you guys will buy some? Will you get something smaller for the kid? No, um, I don't, I can't afford jerseys because they're $175. <laughs> so I'll probably get a $35 hat and call it a day. All right. All right. Hey, so it's something. It's something. It's better than nothing. Yeah. All right. Right. Well, that's what uh, we got the rankings. We'll put those again. I'll uh, have those in the description so you can get the full insight uh, of what Thomas had to say about them at redbirdrants.com. Make sure you're giving him a follow on Twitter X as well. So uh, you can go through all of that stuff with him. And every time he posts something, uh, you'll be able to, to know where it is and uh, go check it out. All right. We're going to talk about quickly about the Baltimore Orioles because they're coming to town next. And I know we're all feeling good about uh, a couple of series victories but the big boys are coming Thomas all right the big <laughs> boys are coming to St. Louis and uh this is a a very important it's a very fragile time for the Cardinals because over the the next two series could kind of make or break what's going to happen with this team here in 2024 so uh, we'll talk more about that next on Locked on Cardinals are you struggling to close deals B2B selling is tougher than ever and that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator, if you're not familiar with it, is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Now, Sales Navigator, it's going to help you target the right buyers. It's going to you know, use surface key signals such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize. And it's going to show you the hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. The idea about all of this is so you're not wasting your time and effort on people that are, are 
going to be something that's, you know, going to be a part of your life and your future moving forward. Like they don't, they don't want you to waste your time, put you in touch with the right people. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that actually matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial by going to linkedin.com slash locked on. That is LinkedIn, L-I-N-K-E-D-I-N, dot com slash locked on for a 60 day free trial let linkedin sales navigator help you sell like a superstar today once again just go to linkedin.com slash locked on to get started today locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's also available on amazon fire tv and the free fire tv channels app Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. You can find it now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. Once again, Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com joining us here today. Time to look towards the future, all right? So the Cardinals, as bummed out as everybody was on Sunday from getting clobbered by the Red Sox, don't get the sweep. Their record on Sundays is just poop it's terrible uh but we move on to a new series and it's not going to be an easy one the baltimore orioles are coming to town with all of that young talent and um they're coming to bush and they're, they're, they're looking to to make an impression i mean it's uh we haven't seen baltimore in town in a while and they're one of the best teams in baseball right now so uh what are your thoughts on how the cardinals need to because when you go and you look here's the thing about baltimore so you see all the talent they have in their lineup. And then you go and look at their pitching staff, and you're like, I mean, they got Corbin Burns now, but then the rest of them, you're kind of like, who the hell are these guys? These guys aren't anything all that special. You know what I mean? They're not like yeah. household names. You know, they, they were so desperate last year that they had to come and get Jack Flaherty out of St. Louis. They just didn't have the, the pitching that they thought, and it didn't get them anywhere. Uh, they mm -hmm. go get Corbin Burns. Uh, they're playing again very, very well here in the regular season. What are your thoughts on – the Baltimore Orioles and what the Cardinals need to do to try to at least get another series victory against them. They are very scary and they are very <laughs> good at hitting. They're very good at hitting home runs, which is something that our pitchers are not very good at preventing, especially yeah. we've got Lance Lynn, Sonny Gray and Kyle Gibson going. So Sonny's been hit recently and Lance Lynn is always hit with home runs. Hopefully Bush stadium is playing to her favors this weekend, this week and she limits some home runs. Um, their starters are actually been really good, and we're luckily avoiding Corbin Burns and Grayson Rodriguez. Um, yeah. Kyle Bradish last year was getting Cy Young votes, but it, it goes back to their lineup. Their pitching is going to be good. It's going to be solid, but their hitters are going to be ridiculous. If, if we can't limit their hits, their home runs, we don't stand much of a chance. Yeah, so currently Baltimore, they have the <clears> – <throat> where are we at here? What second best record in the American League right now? Twenty nine and fifteen. Yeah. Only the Yankees have uh, have a better record. And then overall in Major League Baseball, that's the uh, third best record: Phillies, Yankees, then the Orioles. They're six and four in their last ten. Um, they're really, really good. But yeah, is I'm a little nervous. I mean, obviously we 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 think of Sonny Gray as the the stopper when uh, teams like this come <laughs> to town, and uh, we get him in game one. What do you think Sonny needs to do? Like, uh, you know, because when, when you go back to the last game, because the, the home run ball got him in Milwaukee, and then mm -hmm. it was a big three-run home run in his last uh, his, his last appearance that made the start look a lot worse than it really was because he still had nine strikeouts. And, uh, you know, he's going to give up some hits here and there, but uh, the one bad pitch was a hanger. Um, are you worried about Sonny Gray? Because some people are kind of like, uh-oh, is he, is he getting old right before our eyes? Because everybody's freaking out that that's going to happen. Yeah, right. uh, every player on our team now uh is that an issue or is it sunny gray just you know it was one bad pitch and uh because he didn't seem he was obviously mad at himself that he gave it up but he wasn't like concerned like yeah i can't figure it out or anything you know in his interviews he seemed to kind of know what was wrong and why these things happened. right he had a couple of blow-ups last year i mean you see a couple of his starts he'd go four innings but then after that he'd go six innings for five games in a row I think it was just a blip. He's just going through a tough spot. I mean, he was so good for the first four or five outings. He deserves one or two mishaps here and there. We can't expect him to be perfect for 30 starts. Uh, I'd expect uh, him to do well. 
thoughts on changes at the catcher position that might have an effect on it. Cause people were starting to point the finger because uh, <laughs> it was Pahez behind the plate in his last few outings. And those have been the worst two outings he's had. Although he yeah. seemed pretty confident Pedro behind the plate in his post game interview. But do you think that has something to do with it? I think it could. Sonny and Wilson Contreras worked together so hard over, over spring training. I mean, you saw the clips of them shouting to each other from 90 feet away, giving each other instructions. Herrera is going to start today, so maybe that'll be a little bit different. We'll get a little bit of a taste of what he looks like with Herrera. And Wilson's in the dugout. At least he has been. Yeah. So he's been he's been around. So maybe that's something that you know it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that Sonny has a couple of off days and all of a sudden Wilson's like, "Hey guys, hey I'm here. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> How can I help out?" So yeah, um, right. Yeah, you're seeing it more than uh, that Yadier Molina guy who hasn't still has not shown his head. Yeah, we didn't know where he <laughs> is. He's in, which is still weird. But uh, you know, maybe Wilson's got some tips or something that uh, you know help uh, Herrera and Pa has uh, prepare a little more for the Sunny Gray start. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll have him in uh, the, the normal Sunny Gray form uh, tonight because they're going to need it because this Baltimore offense is. Uh, it's pretty darn special. And then after that, you got the Cubs coming to town and uh, they're playing some uh, decent ball as well. They're keeping up with the Brewers in the Central. So uh, this week is going to be it ain't going to be easy. And what would you consider a successful week of baseball for the Cardinals? What do they need to finish this week to prove to everybody that they have turned the corner a little bit and uh, are headed in the right direction still? I said six to three, six and three to start like the Red Sox Orioles Cubs series, that would be a great, great showing. But even if we lose two against Baltimore and then win the series against the Cubs, I think that'd be successful. It's not ideal, but five and four coming out of the stretch, it's probably the toughest they've had all year outside of the beginning of the year. Yeah. It'd be pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, hopefully some of this uh, added energy and juice coming from the connect jerseys and just the fact that they've been winning more ball games than they've been losing recently, five of their last seven. So, uh, you know, the, it's positive vibes right now, despite the the clobbering on Sunday and uh, should be should be some entertaining ball uh, this week with the Orioles and the Cubs in town. All right, Thomas, uh, tell everybody where they can find you on Twitter X because you know you love spelling out your name for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, T-H-O-M-A-S-G-A-U-V-A-I-N on Twitter. Next. There you go. There you go. Give him a follow and obviously check out RedbirdRants.com. Again, the uh, entire rankings, all of his details that he goes into uh, at RedbirdRants.com. We'll have that linked in the description. And uh, feel free to browse around and uh, listen and watch all of the different episodes and stuff that they have uh, over at RedbirdRants.com because uh, a lot of entertaining information available there for you. Thomas, mm -hmm. as always, appreciate your time, buddy. Let's have a good week of uh, Cardinal baseball together, all right? Absolutely. Let's go win some games. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel and love for the Cardinals grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason, and we will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.